Boya Kasha Ali B coming at ya. As you can see, me dressed for the occasion that me Julie got for me birthday. Her Jamaica top, which I believe is near White Hart Lane, me favorite football team. Me and Mr. Tutti will be visiting there very soon. If you want to donate to my Patreon, it's in my toolbar. Me not use any bad language, but that's where it is. Control yourself. So what I'm saying is that if you want Mr. Ali B to travel down to England, which I believe is very near the, the country of China, then donate to my Patreon. Mr. Tutti like to travel. We be staying near a, a beach, I believe, at uh, the local spot where the beaches hang out is me you know mr tutti likes to mingle with the the beaches but he uh been not out for the past few days because he been using my slipper as a surfboard haven't you mr tutti so i've been training him proper so i, I want to learn proper english so i'm coming down to the stains massive very soon where me brother from another mother mother not a mother, 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 Jeremy Yahoo, who's down at uh, Speaker's Corner, where we have the, the Jews on the one hand going at it, and the Muslims on the other hand going at it, and the Christian in between, teaching the truth about Jesus, big up to Jeremiah, which I forget his ministry, but it's something to do with his pet cat who died last year. So me going down to do the funeral before it ends up in a stew. And before Mr. Tutti finds out that, you know, what's happening. He'll be down there like a shot. The other thing I want to talk to you about is to salute everyone down there at Goldas Green. Oxford and Edinburgh, which I believe is also just to the northeast of London. So big up to you all there. Me Julie also got me new goggles. Which I'll be wearing for the occasion. Praise God. Me and the homeless preacher. We'll be going out. In London town. At night time to preach the good news. Link in me. Uh, me not say any bad words. But link in the toolbar. In me toolbar. Below. If you want to see Mr. Ali B down there. Preaching the good news. The true gospel of repentance. No drugs, no alcohol, and certainly, Mr. Tutti, no bitches. That's the gospel. Thank you for sharing it. A big up to everyone. Say big up to everyone, Mr. Tutti. Big up. God bless. So what does the Quran say about Jesus Christ? First thing I've got down here is from Surah 3. Step by step he has bestowed upon me from on high this divine writ, setting forth the truth which confirms whatever there still remains. For it is he who has bestowed from on high the Torah to the Jews and the Gospel to the Christians. Right? And so what this says is that is scriptures within the Quran that venerate parts of the Bible and are actually encouraged to study the Torah, encouraged to study the Psalms, encouraged to study the Gospels. And so the major difference between the doctrines within the New Testament and the Quran is that 
at the moment. And as long as you say that God can't have a son, which I'm going to prove according to the Quran that yes, it's true that Jesus is the Son of God. And the second thing that you dispute is Jesus' death and resurrection, which again I'm going to show in the Quran that um, both God and Jesus Christ prophesied about Jesus' death and resurrection. Okay. Now there's obviously things within the Quran that contradict what's been written, but there are things within it that actually confirm what the, the Gospel teaches and what the, the Torah teaches as well. So I'm just going to read some of these things out right now. The first point that it talks about in the Quran is from Surah 19, the Surah of Mary, verses 20 to 21. It reads, She said, How shall I have a son whom no mortal has touched, neither have I been unchaste? He said, Even so, thy Lord has said, Easy is that for me, and that we may appoint him a sign unto men, as a mercy from us, and as a thing determined. So what's that saying? Various scriptures within the Quran that talk about Jesus uh, being born of a virgin, right? which actually lines up with uh, Isaiah 7, 14. It lines up with the testament of what the apostles teach. So Jesus, not having an earthly father, whereby the God himself is the one who put that seed into Mary. So that makes him the son of God according to these verses. Very hard to dispute that. But again, people want to dispute that, but it's very difficult to do. Now it says in Proverbs 34, 30 verse 4, Who has ascended up to the heavens or descended? Who has gathered the winds in his fists? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name, if you can tell? So that verse within the Proverbs again confirm that God himself has had a son from the beginning which is part of himself. Some Christians describe it as the Godhead, the Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Well, this again is found in the Quran as well. It's found in the Bible. And it's found in the Quran as well, as I've just read out. The second point that it describes is Jesus being referred to in Surah 4 as a, a word being from God. Okay, it says, The Messiah, Jesus, Son of Mary, God's Messenger, and His Word. So from that verse, you can see that Jesus is referred to as the Messiah in the Quran. And he's also referred to as the Word of God. Very interesting. That's what the Bible teaches. And so how has Islam slipped into whatever it slipped into, I don't know, because there's dozens of verses within the Quran that actually teach Jesus' death, resurrection, and his sonship as well. Okay. Next verse um, talks about the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, God's messenger, his word that he committed to Mary and a spirit from him. And so indeed, as we just read in Surah 19, talks about Jesus being the Son of God, God himself putting that seed into Mary. Mary had no relations with a man. And again, it refers to him as a spirit from God. No other prophet in the Quran is referred to as that higher status. Very interesting. Me as a Christian, I actually believe that um, yeah, Jesus, that through Jesus Christ we receive the Holy Spirit. So I believe. So again, you can dispute. And that's kind of what it teaches here as well in the Quran. Amazingly, the next verse it says that Jesus was more exalted than any other so-called prophet in the Quran. So Jesus is mentioned 180 times more than Muhammad within the Quran, Surah 2, um, verse 53 states, Those apostles we endowed with gifts, some above others, to one of them God spoke, others he raised to honor. To Jesus, the, uh, the son of Mary, we gave clear signs and strengthened him with the Holy Spirit, or it says that the power of God. So again, this is referring to who Jesus is, what he came to do, and his uh, highest esteem out of all the messengers and angels of God. 
The next one we'll go to is from Surah 3, verse 45. Lord, the angel said, O Mary, behold, God sent thee glad tidings through a word from him of a son who shall become known as Christ Jesus, son of Mary, um, of great honour in this world and the life to come and shall be those who are drawn near to God. And so it actually refers to the followers of Jesus are those who are drawn near to God himself. It doesn't refer to any other of the prophets if you want to get close to God. It doesn't say follow Muhammad. It doesn't say follow whoever. It says the followers of Jesus are exalted and they are known to be those who are close to God. Very interesting these verses. They must have missed them the past uh, 1400 years or so but it shocked me and uh, definitely would like to share this information I think it's important information because me as a Christian anything that venerates Jesus Christ exalts Jesus to me is something that I need to share you need to realise that yourself that there's no salvation through any other or through Jesus if you're a Muslim, a Christian or a Hindu, or whatever it is, there's only salvation through Jesus Christ alone. Okay, you've got to realize that. The next verse describes his perfection and purity. Uh, there's an Arab prophet called El Bukhari who testifies of Christ's infallibility uh, within their teachings. The next one is the uh, the part that Jesus created a bird and breathed life into it. So again, as Christians that believe that Jesus is the co-creator of the universe, if you read 1 John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. So the Word of God created all things. And so we see in the Quran, Jesus actually creating a, a bird out of the dust and then making it alive, breathing life into it, as we actually read in Genesis 1 when God created Adam out of the dust and breathed life into him as well. So me as a Christian, I believe Jesus is the salvation, the word of God, as the Quran testifies as well. So it's about time you realize that what your own holy books teach about Jesus Christ. The next one here is from Surah 3, 40 and 49. I will inform you two of what things you eat, what things you treasure up in your houses, Surely that is a sign for the believers. It says that Jesus is a source of revelation, wisdom, the Torah, and the gospel, the good news, which is true. The, 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 the true good news is that Jesus died for your sin, and was resurrected, and the fact that if you accept Jesus for who he is and what he did for you on the cross, and you ask him into your life, you shall be sealed with God's Spirit. Okay? So understand that it does teach, teach this within, the Quran as well. There's no revelation except but through Jesus. The book of Revelation was given to John and that book, that revelation was given through Jesus Christ. So that aligns with what the Bible teaches. So the next one is that Jesus did miracles. Um, the Quran does testify to this as well. Surah 3, 7 and 48. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. Um, Surah 5, 110 talks about Jesus bringing life from the dead and as we go on um, right down to Surah 355 is God speaking I will cause thee to die this is God speaking to Jesus and I will raise thee to me so that's resurrection so that's Jesus' death and resurrection um, and I will purify thee of those that believe not Okay, so that's talking about Jesus' followers. I will set thy followers above the unbelievers till the resurrection day. And so even the Quran defines a believer as one who is following Jesus Christ. One who is following Jesus Christ. Let me read that again. Surah 355. I will cause thee to die. This is God speaking to Jesus. I will raise thee to me. I will purify thee of those who believe not. I will set thy followers above the unbelievers till the resurrection day. So again, you can't dispute 
that in fact the Quran is actually teaching to follow Jesus Christ. He's actually more exalted than any other prophet within the Quran. And a lot of the things that are said in there actually align with the Bible and other holy books as well. Okay, the next one is from Surah 19, uh, 33. This is about Jesus. Blessed is the day I was born. Blessed is the day he dies. Blessed is the day he's resurrected. So that's very simple to understand. Jesus himself speaking about his death and resurrection in the Quran, which lines up with uh, what the gospel teaches. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. Matthew 26 says he is risen from the dead as he said he would. Hallelujah. So again this is a testament about what Jesus did for us and the fact that the God, or Allah if you want to call him that, said that he would exalt the followers of Jesus more than any other prophet. It's quite a big thing to understand. If you want to take this flyer away and read it, please come and get one. Give me some feedback because I, like you, am a student of uh, the holy books, read the Bible, the Quran, the Vedas, and whatever else you want to bring to the table. Hallelujah. I'm sure God bless you.
think they made a kind of mass home or buy, so. And then, so during that time, will be, yeah, yeah, I mean, during that time, there will be a lot of people in and out of the Glasgow College, so it will be a good time to go um, through street preaching. Nothing but the blood of Jesus Walking with me all again Nothing but the blood of Jesus My precious is that flow That makes me all strong And my other gifts I know Nothing but the blood of Jesus What can I show in my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus You can make me whole again Nothing but the blood of Jesus That makes me rather strong and all other gifts I know Nothing but the blood of Jesus So also, if you want to learn about any holy books such as the Quran, the Bible, the Vedas that have been a university have studied these books and uh, they're all open to interpretation. So all I do is provide information that you can make up your mind about what these books say and what they mean. And so just a few minutes ago I was reading out verses from the Quran which speak about Jesus' death and resurrection. Amazingly. Isn't that amazing? Why not? Because Muslims don't believe in Jesus' death and resurrection even though there's scripture in there in the Quran that venerate Jesus' death and resurrection. And so again, all the scriptures, the holy books are open to interpretation. For me, as a Christian, it's very amazing to find these things within different holy books in the world, different places I've visited in the world. If I go to India, I find that there's a hundred million Christians there and that they recognize that what's called the Prajapati sacrifice, which is, is a verse in the Vedas which speaks about the chief of the gods sending a part of himself to the world to die for the sins of his people. And only Jesus Christ fulfilled that. So that's why a lot of Hindus follow Jesus Christ. That's how they start to read the Bible. And uh, out of the millions of Hindu gods, none of them died for their sin except Jesus. And so whoever put that prophecy in there, a lot of these books, the Sanskrit books, were read, uh, sorry, written by peasants, farmers, people who studied uh, the constellations and the stars and so on. That's how a lot of religions began. And as we read in the book of Genesis chapter 1, 14 to 16, it talks about God created the sun, moon, and stars for signs, seasons, for days and years. Signs. So the star signs. What are the star signs speaking about? Well, if you start with the first star sign called the Virgin, then you can relate that to the, the gospel, that the, the Son of God came through a virgin, died for the sins of the people. And if you look at the last star sign, which is called the Lion, then you can relate that to Jesus' second coming. That he returns, as the Bible says, is the all-conquering Lion of the tribe of Judah. Okay? Hallelujah. So that's the star signs. God created the star signs. Whatever you want to study, physics, whatever religion you're into, there's something in there about Jesus Christ. God has made sure 
that he's written. There's something in the Quran about Jesus. In fact, Jesus is mentioned 180 times more than Muhammad in the Quran. 180 times more. That the God of that book says that the followers of Jesus Christ will be exalted more than any other of the prophets. It's very important to understand that. Surah 355 is God himself speaking to Jesus. I shall cause you to die. Now in Islam we say Jesus didn't die, but there's a direct message from God to Jesus. I shall cause you to die. And I shall contend against those who have contended against you until the resurrection, until I take you to be to my throne. So that's the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ within that verse. And if you don't believe that, go to Surah 19, verse 33, which is Jesus himself prophesying of his birth, death and resurrection. So the Quran does speak about Jesus' death and resurrection. If you sat down and read the Bible, sat down and read the Quran, sat down and read the Vedas, which is like thousands of books of the Vedas, so it would take years to read it all. But I can tell you that there's certain things within that that point to Jesus. Only Jesus Christ fulfills these criteria. And I see it to you today, Jesus said, Who do you say that Jesus is? A good man or a prophet? Or is he the son of the living God? Yes, I'm accepting Jesus as the son of the living God and that he died for our sin, my sin and your sin. To drag your mind out the gutter, to take all the hatred out of your heart. Absolutely. Jesus came as pure and perfect love, as it says in the Quran, a perfect spirit from God. As it says in the book of Isaiah, born of a virgin, as it says in the New Testament, that he came and that God so loved the world as to give us his only begotten Son, so that those that believe in him shall not perish, but inherit eternal life. Every single one of us will be judged by God in the last days. And the only question is, where is, where is the blood that was shed for your sin? That's the only question that God's going to ask you. And if you know that answer, if you accepted Jesus, Jesus says, those who have confessed my name to their friends and families, I shall confess your name to the Heavenly Father on the day of judgment. For those who confess not my name, I will not confess your name on the day of judgment to the Heavenly Father and to the Holy Angels. That's what Jesus said.